Hi everybody, Bible Talk with Carolyn B. And today is September 24th, 2022. And I'm coming here with a message I've already had for us already. And it bears repeating according to God. God wants to know what we're doing. Because right now he's separating the wheat from the tares. Right now what's going on, this so-called shift and a new thing, it's just God separating the wheat from the tares. And right now, there's more tares than wheat, y'all, because God keep on, this is something God keeps telling my head. That when you doing something wrong and you are a Christian, when you're doing something wrong and you know you're doing something wrong, you are to correct yourself. You cannot go on doing that wrong thing. I don't know why people do things that are wrong in the sight of the Lord unless there are a couple of reasons. One is they can't help themselves. Two is they don't care. Three is they assume that God will forgive them for it. And those are the, the ones I, I think about uh, that comes to mind when I think about when people are doing the wrong thing and talking about their Christians. I'm not condemning you. I'm, ask, tell, I'm just telling you what God has told me to tell you. Now, who can talk? I don't know why he got me telling you this because when the, the demon spirits from all these people across the street from me in the same building from my sister from y'all be coming at me I get overwhelmed and I start cussing them out and I mean curse words so I don't feel you know that I should be saying this to people but God knows this about me. He knows that if it's a sin I'm committing, and I know I'm committing it, I'm getting ready to stop it or tell God I can't stop it and constantly pray about it when it surfaces. And clearly, God must be seeing that you're not doing that. I have a for instance which is, say for instance, you talking on your channel and you're giving us the best word, a very good word, and, and a lot of people benefit from it. But whenever my sister come in, you, you, it, and any other devil, these, this is just the devil in her, but she's a prominent evil person. And she's prominent in the kingdom of darkness. And I could see her flatteries and buffooneries going on with the men and you give yourself you let yourself become subjected to her wooing and her lustfulness and what you should be doing in those cases is rebuking her for her good and for your sake but you don't you fall right into it so many many of television evangelists many of you guys on YouTube have went into her lair and now your soul is tied to her the bible says in proverbs 7 that you won't be untied from that i it didn't say it like that but it's it's like it's a it's a it's a very bad bad problem and if you tie to that when jesus comes you know you're not coming with jesus this is the word of the lord you're not going there and anybody that will cause you to be a stumbling block to anybody else, you're not going with Jesus. These are things that Christians are supposed to look out for, pray about, and change. You were in the world doing the same thing. You can't be a Christian and do the same thing people, worldly people do. I wrote down here, what service can you be of to God, for God, for, for the kingdom, if you don't trample over these serpents and scorpions? 
like God says in Luke 10, 19 and 20, that he's given us power to trample over serpents and scorpions. How is it that a devil won't bother you so much you just give in to him? I mean, the purpose of being a Christian is to trample over serpents and scorpions. I see married people giving in to her. I, I understand that a man got a lust problem. But it's not really a problem. It's just something society told you that you are, uh, that is a privilege to you. But it's not. Society can't tell you that sex outside your marriage or sex before marriage is a privilege to you. If the Bible that you read and call yourself a Christian for tells you that you can't do it. It's so simple. So, you know, when I see people giving in to that lust or any other sinful behavior and jealousy and hatred and strife, I, I tend to think that you're, you aren't with us. You're not with me. You're not with God. You're not trying hard enough. God knows I sat in this position for seven years since I've been saved and, and 62 years out of my life, and I'll be 63 soon. Okay? So... I've been a victim of my upbringing. I've been a, a victim of my siblings and my parents. And I didn't even know I was a victim. I just thought life was just dead like that. And, you know, like, I had to make the best of it. So I did. I, I don't, no matter what people say or thought about me, I lived like I felt like living. I lived like and made myself did things I enjoyed. So, you know, I don't feel like I was a lesser than or a, a, a little thing or a nobody. I don't feel like that. I never felt like that. But people tend to think I'm like that. But, no, I was doing my thing thing just like people still are that call themselves Christians. No, um, I realized that I was raised up in a family where they did not want me to know who I was in God. In, in the spirit and world and in the kingdom. They didn't want me to know how God loved me and what God thought about me. Even to the point where I was brainwashed enough to have forgotten it. I only started remembering the things God did to me when my father died. Like two months, I mean, I, if there it was such a rush of evil things that happened to me that he had done to me. That I even looked to God and I wasn't even saved. I'm like, God, why would this stuff come to me like this? You know, in this big, great, big, huge, unmanageable package of things that man did to me in my life. But that was just the tip of the iceberg. I come, I go come along all the rest of my life to realize everything everybody had done to me out in my family and outside of it. And it's all been the same thing. And you guys are doing it to me now. And I'm not t giving you this word from me. I'm just saying, if you're doing it to me, you're doing it to other people. And you do it, and it's a habit, and you think that's okay, but it's not. We, in, in Christianity, we have to come out of the world. If you don't come out of the world completely and fully, you're not going with Jesus Period. God, thank you for stress. I'm stressing to you what God wants you to know. You are not going to hang on to anything worldly and get in, in the, to the kingdom of God and with Jesus. You're not going to. Now, I realize there are things in my life that I'm doing that I don't know about, and that goes for you too. Those things God will bring to, your, to the surface of your mind, and you will know so that you can deal with them. But I realized that in this seven years, I pro have progressed to the point where I'm out of the wilderness. I, I, be, I know I'm out, and but the devil is trying to keep me in that mi wilderness mindset, making me think that it's not all over. When, when God says it's all over, when the Spirit of the, the Lord says it's all over, I know it's all over. But the only thing that's not over with is God has not shown me my path yet. I do realize, God, thank you, that he told me a certain specific month that he will do a certain thing, which the certain thing, I don't know what it is, but I know the month, but I'm not going to mention it, because I don't want y'all or anybody else hanging around 
trying to determine what God said. I'm not going to tell you. And God, I beg you not to tell them. Because the devil have a way with God. He, he knows how to use God's word to get from God things he wants that he does not need and should not have. And I believe that's why my sister was able and my family members were able to do me like they did me. Knowing I was a child of God. Nobody encouraged my way. Nobody. My mother, one time I was sitting drawing. Like I used to love to draw. And I was about five or I may, I, I may be six, but I, I remember five. And she walked, gets, I'm right across from her. She gets off the couch, comes over to see as if she's looking at what I'm drawing. And she says to me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, a nun. My mother could barely hold her laugh back. And I looked up at her from my little seat. And her mouth was clenched closed. You know, like, she couldn't believe I said that. It discouraged me so much that that thought of being a nun, it, it, it left me. But I'm glad that happened. Because nuns are just as evil as the next person. Nuns and pre, uh, uh, popes and, and, and monks and all those, that, that's full of mess right there. You know about the Catholics. How, how they abuse children and boys and uh uh so I'm glad I never was a nun cause nuns be coming up pregnant by the priests and stuff so man that wasn't the way for me but I know that I loved God she didn't acknowledge that she just went back and sat down she didn't say anything about what you gonna do how you gonna do this and all this nothing they didn't encourage me none throughout my life to pursue God they didn't I, at, I, at 11 years old, I asked my mom, I said, Why, how come we don't go to church? Can we go to church? The next week, my mom takes me to church. I get baptized the same day now, this one time, and then we come home, and then I'm, that's it. I, we never went to church again. So a couple of weeks later, I said, Mom, when are we going back to church? She says, guess what she said to an 11-year-old? I thought you were going to go on your own. We went to church clear across town. What do you mean? How do you how would you expect me to go to church on my own? Are you kidding me, Mom? You know, I didn't say any of that because I was, you know, my mindset was uh, conditioned to not speak back anything that made sense in, at all. You know, I mean, and so I didn't say anything. I just, you know, went on about my life as if I thought that Church is not important. That's that's what I got from that, okay? But I realized, like, last night, y'all, God woke me up. Well, it was this morning when I was waking up. You know, I was semi-waking up. I saw the Father in heaven, God himself, not Jesus, not the Holy Spirit, not an angel, but God, dealing with a black entity. An entity in black. A smoky black shadowy figure for me. And I fell right back to sleep. Because God, I, you know, I guess God put me back to sleep. Because I probably wasn't supposed to wake up. I'm telling you, the demons that attacked me in my sleep, I never have waken, awakened except for last night. God would keep me hard asleep. That I, I, I just... I would wake up and know that, the, that they have been bothering me, have, ooh, been hurting me, been chanting and, and casting spells against me. And I ask God, how come I don't wake up? How come I don't know anything? Because God knows what they were doing I would, wouldn't be able to handle anyway. But I'm beginning to wake up lately. This this first time was when I saw God fighting himself. God dealing with he wasn't fighting nothing. He was dealing with that that entity, him, his own self. I was, I was grateful, you know. I, I couldn't believe it. I was so grateful to know that God is really, really does watch over me in my sleep. But prior to this, this last night, I mean, for months now, God has been waking me up in the middle of the night to pray. And I, I know that is some activity going on, some evil activity going on. And I would pray and I could fall back asleep. I was allowed to fall back asleep. 
So I know that God is doing a work in my life. I'm a bit frustrated because I've I've never had help in the Lord. I've never had help in the Spirit. It, am I that much to y'all people out there that you don't want to help me? You, what are you afraid of that I might excel past you or re realize who I am in God? Because now, after I woke up this morning... As I was musing and meditating, God showed me I am a higher creature. I'm, I'm not a higher creature, but I, I have a higher calling. I have such a high calling, and you guys would tell me that, but I didn't see that at all. But I saw it this morning. It was so high I couldn't grasp it and bring it down to myself until later today. And when I did grasp it, well, the reason I couldn't grasp it is because it got tainted. The devil jumped on it, laid on it, and, and put himself in it. And so I, 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 uh, it got, you know, it just turned into something really, really ugly. But I saw a glimpse of what y'all be talking about. But I'm telling you guys right now, if you don't get that in your life, you're not going to get to heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It all came together at that one moment. What I saw, what I dreamed of, what was going on in my sleep, all that. It came to this. To tell you guys, if you don't get feel get that higher calling, get that 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 thing I felt. Oh my God, that is who you are. If you don't catch that and grasp that and live for it, through it, you're not getting there. And neither am I, if I don't. But all I can do right now is ask God, what was that? What, what, I'm, that's something I'm supposed to live in. I'm supposed to exist in that. And I know it. But he showed it to me. I guess as a precursor to, you know, living in it. And I know that you and every one of y'all that call yourself Christians, that not call, I'm not saying that as, you know, Society says call yourself, but if you call in your name by Christ's name, call in your title by Christ's name, you're going to have to get yours. I know it's hard, y'all, but God did give you me to help you. But if you continue to think I'm such a small thing that you can agree with my sister when she dogged me, put me down, lie on me, just to shut her up or so she don't give you an evil spirit and bother you. You'll never see that part of you. You'll never see that God person in yourself. And you'll never make it with Jesus. I know that's a hard pill to swallow. Because you think you're going to heaven when Jesus comes, but I don't think so. I, I, a whole bunch of you, you know, it, 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 I don't think so. I really don't. You're going to have to see this person you are in the spirit and live that person. Ask God to grant that for your life and clearly you don't have it if the devil can persuade you to agree with him on any matter whatsoever it doesn't matter what and you do it you 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 are well you do not have that what i see god gonna give me and you without it you can't get where god is that that's the god heaven truth I ain't telling you this because I know I'm telling you this because God knows. So maybe, now thank you, Father, because you guys, I'm telling you, you, you preach a good word on your channel and you go back clearly. You, you go back to your life doing the same old evil stuff you've been doing. And couples, this, I, before I go, the Lord wants me to talk about married couples. Hurting each other, keeping each, holding each other back in the spirit, quenching each other's spirits. God let y'all get married to be a team, to merge together and fight demons out of your marriage, out of your life, and serve Him. If this is not what you're doing, you're not serving God, and you might as well go back to your old ways. Cause uh, Jesus don't like the fence straddlers. He said, he said, if you hot or cold, he wish you were hot or cold, because that lukewarm stuff, he vomits out. 
you know, and you, it's two of you. That I guess that's why God said where there are two or more in my name, there I am in their midst. Because when a married couple is two people at all times, you're always a couple. You're all you're married. You joined together. So if y'all praying together, the, the the demon kingdom should look out. I shouldn't see a girl, a woman, or a man, but mostly I see the women on YouTube giving their message while their man is bringing them down. I see them, the spirit, just bringing their spirit down, keeping them in a controlled environment that they control, the man control. And these are mostly the ones over, you know, the foreign women. Although our women here do too, are, are like, I do that too. I are treated like that too. You know, men, you can't keep the women down and it's gonna be it's gonna be the blood on your hands if the both of y'all end up in hell. The blood will be on your hands mostly. It's gonna be on her hands for her own self and the marriage and you and the children. But it's mostly gonna be on your hands because this is you wanna control your woman the way society wants you to control your woman. And God don't want nobody to be controlled at all. Hey, we don't have the power to control another human being or another human spirit. The only power you can get to control somebody else is that of Satan. Because God do not control us and you can't be controlling people. I don't care who it is. It's not your duty or job. Control yourself. Yeah. Uh-huh. And pray. Mm -hmm. About that situation right there. But married couples, I don't see how in the world you have so much trouble in your marriage when it's two of y'all at all times and God should be in your midst. Y'all should be able to conquer any entity that come against your marriage, especially that of my sister uh, Jezebel. I see, I see husbands going right to her, getting on planes, going clear over the water to, to meet with her, be, be with her. People, men, I, I think, I, this is what I'm thinking, that one of them, somebody done bought her a house. They should have let her sleep on her car that she brag about all the time. You know, I, I don't understand how she could seduce you like that. And you got a wife that, you know what, maybe your wife don't, don't care about you. Maybe she just marrying you so you could buy her a house. So she could live in the house you bought. But ain't no way. You should be able to comfort like that. That's why they want these planes, airplanes, so they can go to and fro. Ain't no telling how many vixens they see. You know, it, it, all this is a mess, y'all. But my very own message was what God told me to come here. And, and God been bugging me for two days, and I'm going to stop this two-day thing or three-day, or, or, you know, just, I don't know. I just, I don't know what's wrong with me. I really don't. And if you do, comment. I don't mind. But, you know, if bad or good, I'll, ta I'll, I'll take it. If it's, if it's something that I should be improving on, I ought to be improving. This is all I need from, I mean, this is all I've been asking from people all along to help me. Help me with you, please. Help me. Because I can certainly help you. I went through all this turmoil in my life right in front of y'all. I, it was not a secret. I hated it, and I told God so many times, God, why does everybody know my business? Because it's a whole lot of devils out there telling the business to one another and, and, and you know, monitoring me. Oh, my God, this is, it's, this is ridiculous. But I know one thing, God, and I, I haven't asked God about it, but I can feel it, that it will come a point where I'm, I'm not even subject to all these people and all these pe demon in the people and the devils either the, the demons and the devil are not gonna be privy to my life not at all I know I know this at some point and I, I, I'm waiting on that with all I am with every anticipation understand that because I, I'm a private because I don't like my business in the street I don't like I, I don't ooh. I don't bother people. I don't be out there spreading my business. I don't gossip. I don't have friends that t that I tell my life to. You know, I, I I don't like being wide open like this. It's like 
I'm a sitting duck. And I, I'm definitely living in the attack zone, like one of you guys said. And I've been praying to get out of this attack zone. But God knows I need money. I, I don't have any money. I don't have any resources right now to do anything. And it seemed like anybody that would help me, she, my sister, get or, or any other demons, but I, mainly her. She gets her hands on them and, and they turn you away. Now, who are you calling yourself a Christian for? What are you doing that for? Thank you, God. This is the purpose God got me on here talking about this right now. Because none of y'all ain't doing nothing toward my cause. You know I'm a leader in the spirit. You know I'm a leader for Christ. You need the leading. You don't want to be led by me. You don't want to be led by anybody. So you, you're going to hold back all your resources that you, God, have given, allotted from yours to give to me. I know you're doing that. I, I, look, I, this is not new to me at all. Because, you know, I've asked a few people, embarrassed myself enough to ask people, and they they did just what I thought embarrassed me too. You know, talked about my business, you know, let it all out. So, you know, I ain't asking for nothing else. But that's okay because I don't know what guy got up his sleeve or whatever it is, honey. You're going to be sorry. I'm not saying that because it's me, but I'm glad it's me. You know, and I'm not going to be the one that's being sorry that I didn't help somebody. Guaranteed, I'm glad it's you and not me. But... You, you're going to be sorry whether you think you are or not, whether you think it'll touch you or your life or not, it will. It's going to, and it will. And I'm here telling you about suffer of the end, for the end times. Because if you people out there don't get it together, you can stop calling yourself Christian. You can stop going to church. You can stop having YouTube channels that talk about God or your prophecies or everything. You don't need to do any of that because you're wasting your time. Thank you, Lord God. And I hope that there are people out there that still want to be saved, even though you see all this mess going on and people with demons preaching the word of God. Because if you do, hun, want to still be saved and get it, praise the name of the Lord and do, the, do God the right way, you can. All you have to do is admit to God that you believe that he has a son named Jesus Christ and that you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead that's all you got to do to be saved all you got to do to have God in your life and I will assist you in doing that I need you to say this prayer with me now close your eyes like I'm doing and repeat after me say God thank you that you sent Jesus Christ to the world to save us from our sins. God, I know when Jesus was here, he died for my sin. He was pent onto a cross and they killed him. But God, in three days, Jesus was alive again because you raised him, your son, from the dead. Now, God, I believe that with all my heart. And I understand that believing those two things, that Jesus was your son and that you raised him from the dead makes me saved. So I confess that I believe it so that now, God, I thank you for saving me. Right now, God, in Jesus' name, amen. And now you are saved. If you did say that, you are saved. If you did believe that Jesus is God's son and that God raised him from the dead, you became saved right that moment. And now your only duty is being saved is to stay saved. Stay that way. Read your Bible. Learn more about what Jesus did because it's deeper than those words and than those, you know, than the eye can see. Only the only eye that can see what Jesus did and the depth of what he did is in the spirit. Stay in the spirit, my people. Read your Bible. Listen to the preachers. You don't have to imitate them and their nasty little lives but their words sometimes are right and most times if they preach it from the word of God the Bible they're preaching the right thing my brother did a uh, Facebook message and he's at a pivot point 
with his in his faith and he's got questions about well if God was this and the Bible was that and this was that you know I can't remember exactly what he said but I responded to my brother and I told him you just had a pivot point you had a point everybody goes through and I didn't want him to feel so alone as he was like no honey don't feel alone Corey you the devil is challenging you and all you got to do is believe on God. Tell the devil get out of here. I, I believe the Bible. I believe God. I believe in Jesus Christ. No matter what I know or don't know about it. Where the origins of the Bible came from. What, you're, what the devil is talking about is going to make you or break you, little brother. Don't let it break you. Keep Hang on to You, you know God is up, up there. And... If you really think about the Bible, Corey, God said in the in Revelation, anybody adding to it will be added to hell, and anybody taking anything away from it, God will take them out of the book of life. So, God is not God is a, a God. He's not allowing nothing in His Word to us to keep to cripple us, to send us off course. I believe in the Bible so much that I I could swear by it. But God told us in the Bible not to swear by heaven or earth nor by hands on my head because I can't change one white or black. But let my yes be yes and my no be no. If you rebuke that devil, boy, he got to go away. He may bring it up again, the doubt, but don't doubt. You know what God has done for you. Do not ever doubt. Even if the Bible wasn't real or wasn't true, God wouldn't give it to you to read. He wouldn't give it. God would change the world to save one. And that one would be you. If, if God had to crush everybody to save you because you work, you love him, that's what God would do. I told that, I said, I talked about this before. God will kill a plane load of people, a train load of people to kill one evil person he going to get to because we are expendable. God can make us another, another pile of clay out of spittle and dirt and put a soul in it and it will be another one. So he can make an exact duplicate of me and the next person. So nah, we 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 ain't we ain't all that to God like that until we're with him, until we with him all the way. That's why the Bible tells us to let everything go and serve God. Lord, thank you. We're nothing absolutely. God love us and our nothing state and everything. But we are, you know, like, not just us, but any any other creation of God's. God can make another one. That That's all I got to say. I don't want to make people think, you know, belittle themselves behind God. But, no, um, if, if God, if what the Bible says, if his word will not come back to him void. And if you don't do it, somebody else will. You know, so, to, this to my little brother, don't query, please. Understand that you just, the devil is just trying you. And he wants you to fall off and fall away from God because you're not informed enough. And the reason you're not informed enough mainly is because you don't sit down long enough with God. And you don't read the Bible enough. And you don't seek. When you, when you have these thoughts and these questions, you got to seek God and find out. you got to shut everything off, shut everybody out, and... Go to God and talk to him. You said you did it before. You got to keep doing it. I mean, you, you got to keep doing it because you're a special person in God. Clearly, I can see that. Clearly, I see this, what I'm talking about. Clearly, my little brother. And the devil don't want you to know that. Just He do me the same way. I guess we born in the same family, so I guess whatever, right? I hear you, little brother, but y'all, everybody else, you know I love you like, you know, 90 going west, and I think you need my help just like I need yours. Let's build together. Let's be uh, all on one accord. In the name of Jesus, I don't want you to go to hell. Why do all this work and go to hell? Y'all, do what I told you to do. Seek God. Close everything off. Couples, get together. Close everything out. And ask God what he wants from you. You know, you're going to be able to live after that. You're still going to enjoy life. Believe me. 
if you give yourself to God. Your life still is enjoyable. Believe me. You might see me sitting here all day, all the time, and I ain't going nowhere. That's because I ain't got no car and I ain't finna keep walking nowhere. But life is enjoyable still to me because God is in my heart and in my apartment. I don't enjoy anything without God. I, life is nothing without God. So, if I'm feeling a little bored or a little upset because I don't have what I need, I, I'll start talking to God and he, and man, come on. His presence and his answers and his love and his compassion, his mercy for me crying, all obliterates all the, the, the bad that I was just feeling just 10 seconds ago, you know. You get with God, people, and come on, y'all. We got to do this thing because people don't value. They don't treasure the kingdom of God and what heaven is about and what being there is about because we don't see it like we should. But I see it, and I've seen it. You know what I asked God, y'all, before? You know those angels in, in Revelation that just circle God's head, saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty? I wouldn't mind doing that for the rest of eternity because God is so wonderful to me. And that's, I'm, I really mean that. If, if my existence only existed to fly around God's head in circles, saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, then this life has been worth it. So, you know, then all of us, most, uh, you know, most people except 144,000 going to live on earth again. You know, you build your houses, your mansions, you live life like we should have lived it before. So, get your, your, holy person on you live that holy person grow in your holy person and you shall see the light all y'all gotta do is ask God for the light to be your life in Jesus name y'all this is message for what's for the good of you take care and I'll see you again soon God bless you I love you you know I do bye now